Hey guys, once the CDU pre-flight is completed, we need to go outside and do the external inspection of the airplane. If you guys want a full video about the external inspection and the walk around of the Boeing 737, just let me know and we'll do one. Next step, we will be talking about the pre-flight procedure. Let's go and see how it is done. So let's start with the pre-flight procedure. And today with us here is uh, Fadi. Fadi is going to uh, be with us here doing this uh, video. Uh, to the left side of the screen, you are going to see the scan flow we have to follow when we do the pre-flight procedure. So basically we go from panel to panel, from top to bottom, and you can see we have six panels here. And then we'll go from left to right on this panel. We'll continue here. And then we'll go from the oxygen mask all the way here. And then we'll finish right here. Let's start from the top uh, left. We will talk about the flight control panel. We check uh, the panel. So the flight control switches, they have to be guard closed. And the low pressure lights illuminated. A spoiler uh, switches, guard closed. The yield damper switch on, light extinguished. And we check the standby hydraulic lights are extinguished. The alternate flaps master switch, guard closed. The alternate flap switch in the off position. And these lights should be all extinguished. So disregard this one. They all should be extinguished. Uh, here in the sim, we have a few differences. Uh, we will mention them uh, compared with the real airplane. But we, we are going to talk about it later. So we'll continue here with the navigation and display its, uh, panel. We'll make sure the switches are in normal, auto, and normal. So now we'll move to the fuel panel. These lights are illuminated. The filter bypass lights extinguished and the crossfit selector closed. And we'll verify the light is extinguished. The center tank fuel pumps, uh, uh, low pressure lights, uh, they are extinguished. Pumps are off. And here we have the low pressure lights illuminated except with the forward pump, which is on because we have the APU running. Now we check that the electrical panel is set. Battery switch guard is closed. The cabin utility and IFE switch is on. The standby power switch guard closed. Light extinguished. These lights are extinguished. The generator drive disconnect switches guards closed and the drive lights are illuminated. We'll make sure the bus transfer switch guard is closed. These lights extinguished, the transfer bus off and the source of lights are extinguished. And then one of the differences from the simulator and the real airplane is that these two lights, they should be illuminated at this point. Now we need to talk about the overheat and fire protection panel. And remember guys, we talked about this in our previous video. So I'm going to leave a link uh, somewhere here so you can go there and check it out. Now we'll go to the equipped cooling switches. We'll make sure they are in the norm position and the off lights are extinguished. The emergency exit lights switch guard closed and the non-armed light extinguished. No smoking sign on and the fasten belts, they can be in the auto or on position. We'll put it in the on position once the fueling is completed and the hose is disconnected from the airplane. So fueling is completed in this case, we'll put it on. We check the wipers, left and right. They are in the park position, and we'll make sure those wipers are stowed. Then we move to the window heat panel, and we'll put these switches on. And remember, we need to put these switches on at least 10 minutes before takeoff. The overheat lights are extinguished, and the on lights are illuminated, except if we have high temperatures outside, they could be extinguished. The probe heat switches, in the auto position, and these lights illuminated. Then we go to the wind and engine and the ice panel, off position, and lights extinguished. Then we go to the hydraulic panel, the engine hydraulic pump switches in the on position, low pressure lights illuminated, and the electric hydraulic pump switches in the off position, the low pressure lights are illuminated, and the overheat lights are extinguished. Here we have the doors panel, and the airplane is being loaded. We are boarding, so some of these lights are going to be illuminated as normal. So now we'll go to the air conditioning panel. 
I want you the A temperature source selector is selected as needed. The trim air switch in the on position, some temp lights extinguished. The air temperature selectors as needed. Then we'll make sure the RAM door full open lights are illuminated. The recycle fans in the auto position. Packs, they can be in the auto or high position. Isolation valve open. APU bleeder switch on and engine bleeder switches on. Then we'll check the dual bleed light is illuminated. And finally, we check that these lights are extinguished. So now we'll move to the pressurization control panel. Auto fail light and the off scale descent lights are extinguished. We'll go to the flight altitude indicator. Remember, we are going to Muscat and we're going to fly a flight level 250. So we'll set flight level 250 here. It's set. And then the landing altitude indicator is the destination field elevation, which is in this case is going to be 50 feet. And that's set. We'll make sure that pressurization mode selector is in the auto position. And the alternate and manual lights are extinguished. So now we'll move from left to right here and we'll start with the lighting panel. Landing lights are off, the runway turn off lights off, and the taxi light off. The ignition select switch, either left or right, and we, we can alternate this position and on sip switch and starts. Yep. The engine start switches are in the off position, and in this lighting panel, we'll make sure that the lights are as needed and the anti-collision light off.